Hey everybody, Dear really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice. And today is our first video along Kageyushi Shiraishi's route. And since we have completed Enemoto's route, um, we have a different choice to make. So I have to start from the very beginning so I can make that extra choice. So I'll show you the choices as we go along, but I'm going to be skipping all the previously read material as before. But this is more like period cube where they don't go back and forth with the story so much past a certain point. So you're not really going to be missing out or getting confused so much. So, alright, let's start along. Yes, I'm keeping the name. And you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. And uh, we'll start with the common. So obviously here, of course, I don't report it or I'll get killed. Okay, so I had to do some backtracking. Come back here to that choice where it was either to lie to him or tell him the truth. Because the guide I was following was wrong. Why are there so many wrong guides for Collar X Malice? You remember how hard a time I had getting on Manet was out in the first place, and <laughs> well, hopefully this one will get me on Shiraishi. Alright, so yeah, like I said, I had to make that choice this time. Speak honestly. To be honest, when we first met earlier, my first impression was that you were a very strange man. Well, you're saying that to my face. You must be some big shot, eh? What? Um, I didn't mean it like that. I thought that your tie pin and hairstyle were very unusual for a supervisor. Oh, this. Well, I may not look like it, but I'm a big cat fan. Uh, yeah, with those ear pins. You definitely look like a big cat fan. They're so carefree. Unlike dogs, don't you love their directness? I'm a dog person myself. Uh, I think I know what you mean. Whenever I see stray cats, I always end up trying to play with them. Some of them just turn away from me and scamper off. Yeah, exactly. I've even gotten squashed by a couple. But I just can't bring myself to hate them. I've tried raising them as pets, but I was too busy to take good care of them. I guess I'll just have to quit my job. Just so you can take care of some cats? He loves cats that much? It's a little surprising. Maybe you could hire a nanny for his cats. If I had to choose, I'd say you're more cat than dog. You just directly say what you feel, without caring at all how I react. Uh, no, actually I was saying... Keep that up. You should feel free to say whatever springs to your mind. So, don't hold back. You can totally be free with me. No need for formality and titles. After all, he sees through everything anyway. I don't think that's... Really? Well, I wouldn't mind at all if you spoke to me that way. Think about it. Right. He was so assertive, I couldn't even speak. Anyways, I doubt we'll ever be on familiar terms. Many thoughts raced in my head as I strolled along behind Shiraishi. And skipping. And here, you don't care if I die? How cruel. This time I understand. Here is working for the SP hard. And according to this guide, and hopefully they're right, since we've already read these on the previous in his previous playthrough, we can actually go directly to. That's enough for now. But I'm going to say first, just in case. Alright, so that's enough for now. Please don't mess me up. And then it's off to 6F Forensics. And this time, okay, yes, now we're in the right place. Because we have to say, I think there's a leak in the police station. Thank God, we should be on the right roll now. All this time... And there's still no sign the X-Day incidents will be solved any day soon. It was a complex case, but even still, there must be other reasons the investigation is stalled. Like, say, there being a mole? I heard the brass have been muttering about it. It's even possible the spy was in this precinct. Heck, I'm even sort of a spy, involuntarily. Keeping in mind that Sakuragawa could be that very mole, I chose my words carefully. Since being assigned to the special district, I've listened to the voices of the citizens. What the people want is a peaceful, normal life. Adonis threatens that peace. I believe that the methods we've been using up until this point will not solve the case fast enough. And that's why you want to cooperate with Yanagi's independent investigation. Though he is a former officer, I'm aware that sharing classified info with him is illegal. However, in light of the situation, 
I'd like to bet on the group that's not bound by the Force's rules. When I decided to cooperate with him, I did so knowing that I may be fired. I accept that. Huh. So, you did what you did after actually putting some thought into it first. Sakura Gawa gave me a glance before letting her shoulders dip in a small sigh. I was all ready to give you the third degree for diving head first into an unknown situation half cocked. But I guess you aren't, really. I made a promise with Sasazuka myself, you know. I'll look after you the best I can. And how much meat did he have to give you for that? Thank you so much. Getting her approval so easily was a relief. Oh, um, by the way, thanks. I know this really great barbecue place. I'll treat you to dinner there sometime. Oh, really? Now you're talking my language. Give me your contact info. Sure thing. We're best buddies now. We traded contact information, and I parted ways with Sakuragawa for now. But, given I'm investigating the department too, I couldn't go into too many details with her. Forensics examines evidence, but they could also fake or destroy it, right? Of course, that sort of thing wasn't limited to just forensics. If there's an Adonis sympathizer here in the precinct, then... All info on the investigation would flow right through to them, and it'd be easy to stay one step ahead. Of course, it's possible others have been collared and are being used like me. Knowing that, everyone suddenly looks suspicious. But the most suspicious of all is... The one that I'm trying to date. Somehow, the first letter, the one that said you would die, was slipped into some case files that I was handling. And the second letter you just saw was left on the table in this office after we found you at Shinjuku Garden. Shiraishi is both an officer and part of the office group. He could easily plant both letters. And given that he's in the crime lab, he could tamper with evidence all he wanted. Then there's his reaction to my collar. It was like he found my situation funny. I would think he was actually involved with it he would try to act indifferent. Investigating him first seemed the best idea. Though I had absolutely no idea how I was supposed to interrogate someone like him. Aha, uh -huh. maybe I'll hit up Mukai first. She was in the same department, and seemed like a much easier target than the man himself. Okay, I have a plan. After I finish up my work, I'll go talk to Mukai. Oh, look at that look on his face. He looks awesome. Chapter 1 The minute I got back to my desk, Mochida called me over. Where the heck have you been? I've been calling you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did something happen? Yeah. A threatening video got mailed to Shinjuku Station staff. Uh, then... Apparently, the whole place is now under gag order until the connection to X-Day can be found. Though I heard they did pin down the location, a man's body was found, shot to death. Uh, why didn't I hear the phone? Special District was tapped to help out, but they sent a different unit. The two of us are on phone duty to handle inquiries. Okay... Hmm? My phone buzzed in my pocket. I grabbed it and looked at the screen to see who it was from. Stop by the office on your way home. Sasazuka! The timing of this text led me to believe that it was in regard to the same case. Alright, I'll head there after work. I shot him a reply and took a deep breath. After that, I was overwhelmed by a restless storm of phone calls regarding the case. Oh, fun, fun. Since it occurred in a residential district, there was apparently a horde of rubberneckers. So many people called asking what had happened that the next time I looked up, it was night. How many people actually do that? Why would you do that? Why would you call the police and ask them? Wouldn't you just watch the news? Hoshino, it looks like the calls are finally letting up. Why don't you call it a night? All right, thank you. Gathering my things together, I stepped out into the hallway toward forensics. I bet they had to be busy too. What with the new incident today? Because it was so busy, I worried that Mukai wouldn't have much time to talk with me. I didn't want to talk with Shiraishi around, but I also didn't want to drag her off anywhere. In all honesty, 
I'd just be happy to not bump into Shiraishi. No, you're wrong, you do want to. Deep in your heart, because I'm your heart. Thinking back on how amused he seemed about my situation depressed me for a moment. If he sees me, he'll probably tease me again. But you like it. Trust me, you do. Feeling slightly apprehensive, I came to a stop in front of the door to the crime lab. I gave the door a quick rap, praying that it would be Mukai who came to answer it. Uh, huh? I've been prepared for the worst, but the seconds dragged on and no one came out. Isn't anyone in? I'm wondering if maybe they hadn't heard me. I raised my hand to knock again. Nope, nuh-uh. You're totally wrong. You're way too narrow-minded about this, Mukai. I am not. I thoroughly examined the materials we have, and I produced a perfectly logical theory. And then what about this instance? Throw this into the mix, and your theory doesn't pan out so well anymore, does it? W well um... That's Shiraishi and Mukai, right? It sounds like they're in the middle of something. I come this far, I wanted to at least probe the situation and see what I could dig up. Quietly opening the door a crack, I peeked at the faces inside. See, there are a handful of commonalities between criminals prone to serial murders, like the X-Day incidents. A significant number of them experience some variety of critical failure and, plunged into despair, resort to a criminal act. Projecting their problems onto others, and they invent an outside enemy for validation. And then, feeling that they're justified, they don't hesitate to use force to kill that enemy. The public's reaction brings them catharsis, and you will see many commit suicide after. If caught, most will request the death penalty. To them, living is far worse. And thus, Adonis will likely attempt to reform this corrupt country, no matter what they feel they must sacrifice to do so. If they are a group acting in concert, there must be someone acting as their leader. And this leader will have no hang-ups whatsoever about their actions. That's what allows them to kill so easily. They believe their acts are justice, not crime. The quintessential mass murderer, I see. <sighs> he spoke firmly, booking no interruption. This man debating criminal psychology was totally different than the one who teased me. That they announce countdowns and draw public attention to their crimes is a definite sign of their belief in the justice of their acts. For this country, at least, premeditated murder on this scale is nearly unheard of. True, Japan's laws make weapons tough to acquire. Terrorist attacks are very uncommon here. Right. Japanese people have a reputation for being law-abiding decent people. But those preoccupations are currently being turned upside down. After all, the government even mandated that the citizenry arm themselves to stand against violent crime. Am I going to say something? How long am I going to listen to this? Uh, I had honestly suspected Shiraishi of being Adonis' mole. But if he was a spy for them, he wouldn't be analyzing their actions that coldly. He might if he was keeping his cover. Thinking about it, those two letters were odd. Why not just leave both of them at the office? There was no logical benefit for Shiraishi to plant one on himself, inviting suspicion. So does Shiraishi have an enemy that was getting him into this? Maybe instead, the real mole planted it on him to direct our suspicions at him? That seemed like the more reasonable theory. Then it's possible the mole is someone with a grudge against Shiraishi. Anyways, how long do you plan on standing out there like that? Again! Always! Every single game! The heroine tries to be a ninja and she always gets caught. Why do I always have zero stealth points as an Otome game heroine? Huh? Only now did I notice that he was staring directly at me. Um, I, I'm sorry. I did knock, but no one answered. Oh, you did? Then I'm sure it must have been drawn out by the director's shouting. Yeah, the director is not yours at all. What? Me? Nah, you were the one shouting. You were just going on and on about your theory. <laughs> <laughs> you both were, in turns. Don't you try to blame me for this. This is why you're such a... <laughs> Great. They're starting to argue again. 
maybe this is a good time to ask him. It seemed a little easier to do that now, especially since listening to what Shiraishi said made me suspect him a little less. Now the question was, do I do some serious digging, or do I pretend I was just passing by? I doubt you just came here on a whim. What reason did you have to see us? <sighs> the easy answer is that you're looking for info on the X-Day-related incident today, but... <sighs> what? When I spoke up a second ago, your attention went to Mukai. So your business is likely with her, not me. Why do you sound jealous? If you're here for info, talking with me is faster. That means you're trying to tell her something you can't tell me. Like, say, how you suspect I'm a mole. <laughs> yep, him with the mind reading. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Your shoulder twitched. Did I hit the bullseye? <laughs> All my momentum gone, I stood there like an idiot. Should I she smile only grew wider? You know, you really are stupidly honest. Almost naive. You'd be such an easy mark to con. Oh, wait. Have you maybe been conned in the past before? Huh. Did I just rub salt in an old wound? <sighs> yeah, I did see this coming, but still. Should I? She probably sees me as nothing more than a particularly fun toy to play with. Oh, he'll get bored of it soon enough, I think. Well, at least that kind of teasing. Then I'll have to find new, worse ways. I was just kicking myself for being dumb when Mukai interrupted us. Director, that is not how you treat a woman. Now look at what you've done. Your complete lack of tact has offended poor Miss Hoshino. What? Really? Miss Hoshino, as you can see, the director suffers from an astonishing lack of social skill. No one would blame you if you felt the urge to bash him over the head with a blunt object. Oh, are you giving me permission? But bash him over the head? For a second, I thought she was making a joke, but... There wasn't a trace of humor in her eyes. Man, I don't think there's anyone in the world who wants to kill me as bad as you do, Mukai. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Wait, that was a compliment? He was technically her superior. Could she really get away with saying that stuff? I looked between the two of them confusedly. Huh, don't worry. We're usually like this. Yeah, it's just a little dark humor. Don't let me in with you. It's disgusting. Oh, that's cruel, Mukai. I was the one who scouted you in the first place, you know. That is an entirely different matter. Um, what do you mean you scouted her? Hmm, when I dropped by Shinjuku Station once, a colleague recommended her to me. She may not look it, but she's pretty smart. Heck, she'd be perfect if she wasn't such a shrew. Director, the may not look it and shrew bit were entirely unnecessary. Huh? Why? <laughs> there goes his lack of social grace. Are you trying to pretend you're nice? Don't bother. You're terrible at acting. <laughs> Are you picking a fight with me? Because I'll gladly take you up on it. This tome right here looks lovely for bludgeoning someone to death. Mukai quickly lifted a huge hardbound book. Huh? She can't be serious. I looked over at Mukai. Once again, her eyes had no sign of frivolity. Um, Mukai? I I think Shiraishi was trying to say you're skilled, and he trusts your ability. Oh, trust has nothing to do with it. She was the only one who seemed remotely useful. Ah, I'm trying to help! Don't sabotage me! I tried to convey that to Shiraishi with a look, but it didn't seem to register. It should! Come on, he's supposed to be able to read everything! Why isn't he getting that? I'm sorry. I let my temper get the better of me. I apologize for my inappropriate behavior, Miss Hoshino. But apparently, it was still good enough to get Mukai to calm down. I inwardly breathed a sigh of relief when she put the giant book back down, as if that big thump was. Oh, well, I guess it's kind of obvious, but Mukai hates my guts. Um, I must say you probably earned it. <laughs> yes, Miss Hoshino. He most certainly has. At heart, I'm a mild-mannered person, you know. Huh, mild-mannered? You? <laughs> well, that's one hell of a joke. I don't need to take that 
from a failure of a human being like you, Director. L that seems a bit harsh. Just look at him. Look at the way he's dressed. He claims it's because he can't afford to care for a cat. But who'd ever wear that to work? What's wrong with it? It's not hurting anyone. I can wear whatever I want. See? He's utterly and completely indifferent to anyone else's thoughts and opinions. Add to that his complete tactlessness, and it's no surprise that everyone he meets hates him. Really? Some people do smile at me, you know. Those were just polite smiles that they put on because they didn't want to be as rude as you. Ugh. I can't believe this man was key to the Prime Minister's attempted assassination case. Hey, you work for me. That shouldn't be a surprise to you at all. Um, do you mean the attempted assassination of the Prime Minister two years ago? You were involved in that case, Shirashi? Yeah, you could say that. I kind of played a big part in arresting the guy who did it. What? Really? Wow, so you're actually a pretty amazing officer then. <laughs> I love honest opinions. Believe it or not, I do take my job seriously, you know. Aggravatingly enough, yes. An enormous number of cases have been solved thanks to his accurate profiling. Yeah, so you can't get rid of him. An annoyed frown wrinkled Mukai's face as she said that. I guess for all her insults, she does at least respect Shiraishi's ability. Make that face for too long, and it'll get stuck that way, Mukai. That'd be especially bad for someone already as over the hill as you are. Oh, now making fun of her age. Dude, that's a low blow. Huh. You can keep that opinion to yourself. I cannot understand how I managed to be inferior to this man. He is an utter tragedy. Come on. Don't let it eat at you like that. It's just the difference in experience. Oh, and in talent, too. You can't forget that part. <sighs> Miss Hoshino, did you hear that? This is what he does all the time. He deliberately undercuts any enthusiasm his people have. Yeah, I kind of noticed. He does kind of pour gas on the fire. Yeah. This argument's going on a little too long, too. True, it does seem a little much. Doesn't it? I would treat him much differently if he was actually someone I could respect. Oh, I gotta say, I can't see you changing much at all. For me or anyone else. Ugh, always has to pipe in for the last word. Enough of this. Go somewhere else, Director. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this his department? But should I she gone, Mukai turned to me. I think we'll get along splendidly, Miss Hoshino. Until I actually start dating, should I she? <laughs> And I think you might fulfill the requirements to join the coalition. Oh boy, coalition? Oh ho ho, there is a coalition only the Chosen are allowed to join. Oh my, look at the time. I'm sorry, I'm afraid today is a poor time for me. We'll talk again some other day. Is it the coalition against Shiraishi? Good night, Miss Hoshino. Darn it, I came all the way down here and I wasted time listening to you two argue. Oh, um, good night. As Mukai strode away, I had to wonder if I'd accomplished anything at all by coming here. You did say you suspected him less after hearing that first part of the conversation. Well, I guess figuring out what kind of relationship they have is kind of useful. Well, um, I'll be going too then. Good night, sir. I turned to leave, but for some reason, Shiraishi got up and blocked me. Ooh? Need something? Um... Just because Mukai left doesn't mean you have to, too. But, um... I... I don't want to interrupt your work. Oh, that. Don't worry. I'm finished for the day. What I'm interested in now is you. What a coincidence. I'm interested in you, too. Seeing the glint in his eyes, I couldn't stop myself from backing up a step. <laughs> I love it when they do this. It's so funny when people take a step forward and take a step back in this game. But as I stepped backwards, he stepped forward, leaning even closer to me. I'm extremely curious why everyone says that you of all people somehow understand Adonis. You don't look the sort at all. Okay? At a glance, you don't seem to have any kind of special talents or abilities. Were I in their shoes... I would have picked someone more useful. Like yourself? Mukai was right. It would be so much nicer if he thought about what he said first. Oh, you look miffed. 
Did I make you mad? No. Since I'm working with Yanagi's team now, I'll be stuck interacting with him a lot more. And in that case, I can't let myself get upset at every little thing he says. Yeah, you're gonna have to let a lot of stuff roll off your back. I'm sorry, I have to go and meet with Yanagi for our planning meeting now. So if you'll excuse me. Really? Why don't I go with you then? You don't mind, do you? Well, you are part of the team. <sighs> Apparently, I don't have the guts Mukai does. I wasn't able to tell him that I did mind. Fine. Shiraishi's face lit up in a bright smile. I turned so he didn't see me heave a sigh. He'll grow on you. Trust me, he will. So, what did you decide to do from this point forward? He asked me that as we walked out of the precinct. I gave him an honest answer. Everyone's already whispering about this, but I think there's an Adonis Mole in the precinct. And you suspected it was me, right? Well, well can you blame me? I don't know all that much about you. True. We didn't have any reason to interact before, so it's no surprise you don't. And, given your hypothesis that there was a mole under undermining the investigation, what will you do next? Try to figure out who it is. You, by yourself? And don't bother. You scrawl all your thoughts across your face far too noticeably. Well, I'll work on it. I can develop my poker face. Urgh. Besides, if someone like you cut out them, the mole would have been caught long ago. Yes, okay, I know that. But it's just too weird that the investigation is getting stonewalled so completely. If there's a mole on the force, it makes sense that the investigation would lag behind. Whoever they are may be well inserted, but if I can figure out who they are, that would be a big step towards solving the case. That, and they would know where Adonis's hideout is, and the details of my collar. I figured I'd start by investigating those closest to me, and work outward from there. Okay, and I can't... Ah, I can't wait any longer to find a good place to stop, because I think... Alright, even with the problems with the forwarding, I think we got enough material here. So, yeah, I'm gonna split it here. I hope it's right. Alright, well, I'll see. I'm moving into the next video right away as recording. As far as recording goes for tonight, so hopping right over. Hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do you really signing out? Bye-bye, everybody.